Hello and welcome to Crumbs and Doilies HQ and it is time for me to give you yet another official Crumbs and Doilies recipe and this one is a big one guys. This is for our epic Snickers cake. Why is it so epic? Well, it's got eight layers, two different kinds of sponges, two different kinds of icing, two different kinds of fillings. It's a real banger of a cake. It's a bit of a project, so let's get started. So first of all, let's get on with making the sponges. Now, as I said, there's two different flavors. We're gonna make chocolate sponge and peanut sponge, because obviously Snickers have chocolate and peanut in them. So I'm gonna do four layers, and I'm using nine inch cake tins, but I'm gonna split those layers when they're done, so there's gonna be eight layers altogether. So I'm gonna start by making the peanut butter sponge, just because that will sit for a little bit and uh, takes a little bit longer, and we'll just get that out of the way. So I'm gonna start by beating my butter and my sugar together. So I've got 315 grams of each. Now before I beat my sugar and butter together, I'm also gonna add my peanut butter at this stage, and you can use smooth or crunchy if you prefer. I'm using crunchy, and I've got 125 grams of it. And now you wanna beat that on a medium to high speed for about 10 or 15 minutes. It's quite a long time, but it needs to be very pale and fluffy. And obviously I'm using this big old freestanding mixer, which is gonna help me a lot. Um, if you don't have one of these, you can use an electric hand whisk, or you can even use a wooden spoon. That'll take the longest, so I wish you luck. Okay, that's been going for about 10 minutes now and it's looking very voluminous and floppy and yummy. It smells really good as well. So I'm gonna put the eggs in now and I've got five large free range eggs and I'm gonna put them in one by one, beating for about three minutes after each one. Right, that's all my eggs in, and if you found that your mixture has curdled a little bit, don't panic. Once we put the dry ingredients, that'll all come together. Um, and now it is time for the dry ingredients. So I have 315 grams of self-raising flour, which I'm gonna sift directly into the bowl. I'm also gonna put a generous pinch of salt in, just to bring out the yummy, salty peanuttiness. And then you wanna fold that in. So if you're using a mixer like me, you wanna put that onto a low speed just to do it gently. And if you're not using a mixer like this, then just use a big metal spoon or a spatula just to fold it. And when it's almost completely come together, you can add the milk and I've got four tablespoons of that. All right, that looks pretty good. So make sure you give your mixer, the bowl, a really good scrape just to make sure that you've got all the bits of the stuff at the bottom mixed in. But now I'm gonna put this into my tin. So as I said, I'm using nine inch tins. I've already just greased them. If you want to line the bottoms, that's okay too. And I'm going to distribute that evenly between the two tins. And then just level that off with a palette knife just so it bakes nice and evenly. So I'm obviously very lucky because I have a big bakery with a lot of ovens and lots of tins, so I can bake all of my sponges at once. But if you don't have that, if you can't fit all four tins in your oven, then I would recommend baking these now. So you're gonna to need to bake them at 170 degrees C for 20 to 25 minutes. Or if you can fit four tins in your oven, go ahead and just put these to one side while you get on with the next sponge. Now it is time to make the delicious squishy chocolate cake. Now this is a classic recipe of mine. I've done this quite a few times. It's really, really simple and I'm gonna put all the ingredients in the description box below. But to start with, I'm gonna sift my dry ingredients together. So I've got plain flour, I've got caster sugar, cocoa powder, bicarbonate of soda and salt. And now I need to mix all my wet ingredients together in a separate bowl. So I've got my vegetable oil, I've got my buttermilk, I've got my eggs, and I've got some cold coffee. And if you don't want to use coffee, you can just use water. And now you can add your dry ingredients to your wet ingredients and give it a good mix until it's completely lump free. Mm -mm. Now obviously this is quite a bit runnier, so you won't need to level this out because it'll just do it all on its own. So in your pre-greased tins, pour it half and half. And these need to be baked for the same amount of time at the same temperature, so that's why I'm doing mine together. But if you're baking them separately, it's still 170 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. 
Right, while our cakes are baking, we can get on with making the two different fillings that are going to go inside the cake. So one of them is a caramel, and the other is a kind of cheat peanut nougat, and they're both very delicious. So I'm going to start with the caramel because that gets the hottest and it takes the longest to cool down. Um, and I've done caramel a million times on my channel, but I have done an extensive caramel masterclass. So I'll put a link to that in the description box below, but it's very, very simple. We're going to make a wet caramel. So that starts with 200 grams of caster sugar and 120 milliliters of water in a pan. You want to start by putting that on a medium heat and then that just needs to simmer and bubble away until it reaches a rich amber color. And when it's hit that lovely amber colour, you can then pour in your cream. I've got 245 grams of cream with a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm going to pour that in really slowly and stirring at the same time. And when all your cream is in and it's thoroughly mixed, that is your caramel finish. But obviously it's incredibly hot right now, so that needs to just be put to one side to cool down, clear the decks, and then we can make our nougat. Now it's time for filling number two, and this is really delicious stuff. This is going to be a peanut nougat, and it's not technically nougat, but it's a kind of cheap, quick nougat, which is really fun to make. So I'm going to start by melting 60 grams of butter in a saucepan. Next, with your pan on a medium-low heat, you want to add 225 grams of caster sugar and 70 millilitres of evaporated milk. That's the stuff that comes in the tin, but don't be confused with condensed milk. And now you want to get stirring, and this needs to be stirred continuously for about 10 or 15 minutes sometimes. The evaporated milk has a tendency to catch on the bottom. You don't want that. So just keep it moving all the time. And what you're looking for is for all the sugar to be dissolved and for it to have thickened up quite a bit. Right, that's looking really thick and everything's dissolved. So turn the heat off. And now, with the heat off, you want to add all the other ingredients. So, I have 240 grams of marshmallow fluff. And a top tip for when you're scooping out your marshmallow fluff, use a greased spatula so that it doesn't stick to the whole thing. It's really annoying to work with otherwise. 75 grams of peanut butter, 150 grams of chopped salted peanuts, and I'm going to use half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then give that a really thorough stir, because there's a lot going on inside this pan. All right, that's about it, I think. So now I'm just going to put that into a Tupperware container because it needs to cool down completely until we need it. Whew, we have almost finished making all the elements of this cake, but we've just got a couple more to do. We've got to do the buttercream and the ganache, which are going to be inside and on the outside of the cake. So I'm going to start with the peanut butter buttercream. Very straightforward, just like all my buttercream recipes. And if you haven't checked out my buttercream masterclass video, then I'll put a link to that in the description box below so you can master buttercream yourself. So I'm going to start by beating my butter and my peanut butter together. So I've got 150 grams of soft butter and 80 grams of peanut butter. And again, if you want to use crunchy or smooth, that's completely up to you. So get that beating on a medium high speed for about five minutes. Now that's looking lovely and pale and silky, so we can add the sugar now. So I've got 340 grams of icing sugar, which I've sifted already, and as usual, I'm going to do it in halves. Right, that has had a few minutes beating after all my icing sugar's gone in, and it's looking a little bit stiff, and that's because of the peanut butter, but don't worry about that, because now it's time to add the milk. And you want to add between three or four tablespoons, but just stop when you think you've put enough in. Mmm, that's looking really good and smelling delicious as well. So we're not going to need this for a little bit because we've got to make something else first. So just take it all off the paddle and cover it in cling film or put it in an airtight container. Uh, because you don't want it to get all crispy while you're waiting. And now I'm going to make the chocolate ganache. And this is going to go around the outside of the cake. Um, and it's slightly different to regular ganache in that we're using butter as well. And there's a top tip because this ganache needs to be a spreadable consistency. So what we're going to do is rather than do the uh, chocolate and the cream together, heating that, we're going to heat the chocolate and the butter together. And I'll show you how it's done. So I'm just going to put this in the microwave for now in 30 second blasts for a few minutes, stirring really well in between each blast. Mm. 
Now, the reason that we're putting a lot of butter in this ganache is because regular ganache with cream and chocolate um, has a very short window of opportunity to use it at spreadable consistency. And this way, with adding the butter, it keeps it a spreadable consistency and it keeps it nice and glossy and just really nice to work with. So that's why we do it. But at this point, I'm going to add the cream. And this way, it cools down the hot chocolate and butter mixture and gets to a spreadable consistency a lot quicker. Right then, that is both my buttercream and my ganache made. The ganache will continue to cool down and become of the perfect consistency by the time we need it. But for now, clear the decks, get your cakes back, and we're going to decorate this thing. Now it's time to start building this thing up. And it's been hard work up until now, guys. You have made lots of things, but it's all going to be worth it very soon. So, first thing we're going to do is make four layers into eight layers. Now, I've already trimmed and leveled off my sponges, so now all I need to do is use my cake leveller, which is this snazzy thing, and if you don't have one of these, these are super handy for this sort of thing. You can do it with a serrated bread knife, but it just might not be quite as accurate. So what I've done is I've put it uh, on a sort of halfway mark with my sponge, and I'm going to just go ahead and split those sponges. Right, so I've got my turntable and I've got a cake board in the form of a nice, pretty marble board, um, but you can use whatever you like as long as it is flat. <laughs> um, and I'm going to start building up my cake. So first things first, I need to stick it onto my board using a little bit of buttercream. And I'm going to pick up my first layer. Now be careful because obviously these are now quite thin and quite difficult to handle, so just be very, very gentle with them. So just lay that right in the centre of your board. So when that's nice and secure, you can then start by putting your fillings in. So the first thing we're going to do is put a layer of buttercream on. When you've got a nice, even layer of it, then with your palette knife, you want to create a little well, and that's what we're going to fill with caramel. So just in the middle, just as to using your turntable, just scoop out some of your buttercream and just pop it back in your bowl. And now grab your cooled down caramel and you want to pour a little bit in, just enough to fill this pool. And I'm just smoothing that out with my palette knife and then I can add my next layer. So this layer is obviously going to be a peanut sponge because we're alternating, so very carefully Grab one of your layers and pop it on top. Now obviously do your very best all the way along when you build this cake to try and get each one straight <laughs> and in the middle, otherwise you'll end up with a wonky cake and you don't want that. So next it's another layer of buttercream and now things get exciting because we're going to put some nougat in. So what I would highly recommend is that you don some very attractive latex gloves just because this stuff's pretty sticky and it doesn't stick to this latex so it's really nice to use when you're wearing gloves. And what I'm going to do is just to grab small little nuggets of it and just sprinkle it over the top. And when you have a nice dotted layer of nougat, then you just need to carry on doing that all over again until you've finished all your layers. So that's my fillings done. Now we need to lock these crumbs in because obviously with all these extra layers, there's a lot more crumbs than there are normally. So my ganache is at the perfect spreadable consistency. So I'm just going to give it a thin layer of ganache just to lock those crumbs in. That's looking good. So now I just need to put this into the fridge for at least half an hour to chill out.
Right, let's finish this guy off. So I've got my ganache here still, and this cake is nice and cool. So my ganache is going to set really nicely as soon as it goes on. So I'm going to give it a thorough coating, and then I'm going to texturize it. So once you've given it a nice, clean, smooth coating, now you can texturize it. So I'm just going to use a big palette knife like this and just very gently make little indentations and using my turntable, bring it back and forth so that I get these lovely lines. So just keep going but overlapping over the last ones that you did. So now we're going to finish this off with all the rest of the stuff that we have left on top. So you should have some caramel left, you should even have a little bit of ganache, which you want to just whack in the microwave for like five seconds just to get to a pouring consistency. First thing I'm going to do is to give it a caramel drizzle on top. Now it's time to get those delightful gloves back on because you know how cool they are. Um, because you can scoop out your nougat and do this with a spoon, but it's just a lot easier to manipulate it with your hands than it is with a spoon. So grab the rest of your nougat and basically dump it on the top and smush it out. So to finish this off, I have my ganache here, which is at a pourable consistency. So we're gonna do another drizzle in opposite directions to the caramel that I just did. And just for one last finish, I'm going to just scatter some extra salted peanuts on top. Well, that is probably the most epic cake that I've ever made. And hopefully you've made it too. And you'll agree because this is such a great cake. It's delicious. It's got loads in it and it's a bit of a project. So I'm glad that you stuck with it. Um, if you've made this, then please do take a picture of it and put it on Instagram using the hashtag Cupcake Gemma so that I can see it because I absolutely love seeing your bakes. I will be back next week with another video. So uh, until then, I'm going to have to have myself a slice of this because it's too good looking to resist. Bye.